from the Penn Libraries. My name is Victor Mayer. I teach Chinese language and literature in the Department of East Asian Languages and Civilizations here at the University of Pennsylvania. And I've been here since 1979, so I know the university well and I've seen a lot of changes here at the university, in, especially in the library. So um, some of my projects, well, I range over a wide variety of fields. Uh, it's mostly pre-modern stuff, but I do um, language, Chinese language, Chinese literature, Buddhism, a lot of medieval Buddhism, popular culture. Um, so I'm w ranging very, very widely in many fields. And I also do archaeology uh, about the mummies of Central Asia. So uh, over the long re uh, period of my career, which spans about 40 years, uh, I have had some radical changes in the way I do my own research and in the fields that I cover. So um, my projects um, continue to evolve and uh, it's hard to predict what I'll be doing uh, five years from now, but I certainly intend to keep active and uh, the library is at the core of everything I do. So uh, but I do, I have changed the way I work through the library uh, in a very remarkable way. I used to come over to the library every day and spend hours here, but now I don't come very often because I do everything from my own computer in my office. And it's just about the same as being in the library in terms of lookup. Actually, things are so much faster. In the old days when we used to have card catalogs <laughs> and, uh, had to co and then we evolved to computer terminals here in the library. Um, and now we have our terminals in our own office, and there are so many things that we can get online now. Um, practically anything you want. You, uh, certainly the journals now, more and more of them are becoming available immediately online or with a slight embargo. So this has really changed the way I do my research. And, um, I like to come over to the library once in a while just to feel like I'm a part of the place and to get a sense of books. And I certainly send my students over here and I demand that they come and uh, browse uh, because I think you make discoveries by browsing. But more and more of the books are being shelved off-site and it's a different, it's a wholly different kind of research strategy that is employed now. Um, now we use more databases and uh, electronic concordances and indices. So it's even changed the n type of research we do. For example, now we deal with large linguistic corpora, which we didn't have at all before. It, it was very painful and time consuming to try to uh, control large amounts of data it was just physically time consuming and uh, tiring, but now you can do these things instantaneously if you know how to use the databases. And uh, even though I myself am not so familiar and conversant with them, I have students who are really excellent at it. So if I tell them what needs to be looked at, you know, for their own projects to, or to help me look at uh, lots of different databases, then uh, we can do it. Um, very efficiently and very fast and it so we find out different things now we learn things that are uh, we wouldn't have been able to know before I'll give you an example uh, about 30 35 years ago I started to work on a project uh, that I really had a deep intuition uh, that there was a, a mistaken notion about a fundamental idea concerning the early arrival of Buddhism in China in the first, second century AD. And um, I knew what I had to do to find out uh, and disprove the current understanding. Um, and I worked at it and I gathered materials slowly. And, and I did this over actually a period of 30 years. Uh, this was a concept about, that said, uh, it was called Goyi. And it mean, it, people usually translate that as matching concepts. Um, and it said essentially that um, 
Buddhism came to China on the coattails of Taoism. In other words, that it was m sort of borrowing Taoist vocabulary to make its way into China. And I always felt that that wasn't quite right. Uh, so I worked on this over many, many years. Um, and then about, ten, uh, about five years ago, when these data databases became available, I said, I'm going to look at every Buddhist text, every Chinese text for the last 2,000 years and just see where this term was used and how often it was used. And re really within like an afternoon, I was able to solve the problem definitively uh, just through the use of uh, very uh, strategic, use, uh, strategic searching of databases. And um, so that paper now has become a very important paper, which has changed the way people look at the arrival of Buddhism in China. And if I didn't have these databases, I probably could have worked on that paper another 40 years, because essentially I had to read all of Chinese literature just to track this term, how it was used. So that's a, a perfect example of how uh, the change in library information science has uh, made wholly new kinds of projects available.